it's at this meeting we uh, talked about our um, newly developed model that's an, a collaborative embedded model for a palliative care team uh, within an advanced heart failure program at a very busy uh, heart failure um, program. And, and what we looked at over the past year's experience, is, this is what we shared here at the Academy, is um, that we've been able to um, intervene earlier and earlier in a, in a more upstream way uh, for patients who are undergoing evaluations for and implantations of a left ventricular assist device. And so from, from the cardiologist's perspective, these left ventricular assist devices are becoming more and more common. Um, thousands of people throughout the world have these devices implanted, and they really carry the promise of helping tons of people with advanced heart failure. So we anticipate that looking forward, there'll be lots more people with these devices. So one of the things that we've tried to do by partnering together is really address all of our patients' needs. Because um, cardiologists, we tend to focus a lot on their heart and their vascular system, but these patients have very complex needs that often go far beyond what cardiology can do by itself. And so we found a very great partner in palliative care, and Hunter and I have been really working together to, to comprehensively address all of their needs. You know, one of the things that is interesting to think about is, um, and this is um, something that you taught me, is to think of heart failure as the cancer in cardiology. So this is a really serious, progressive illness with a lot of supportive care needs from a good interdisciplinary approach. And uh, for patients who are eligible for these left ventricular assist devices, um, they do come with the promise of a better, better function, better quality of life, and better um, morbidity and mortality when things go well. Uh, but even when things go well with this really serious surgical approach, um, patients are at risk for a variety of complications at the, at the time of, of implantation and afterwards. This is, this is a life-changing experience for them. Uh, and so there's a, there's a, a great opportunity uh, for palliative care specialists and cardiologists to work really closely together to provide more hol holistic care for, the, for these patients. The other really cool thing is that because we work together, it feels seamless. Because we don't want patients to feel like, here's your cardiologist, here's your palliative care team. It feels like one team taking care of all their needs. And this is really important because as we move forward, if patients are doing well, great. Hunter and his team can manage pain issues and help us in that regard. But if, if, if patients have serious complications like stroke, major bleeding, or, or patients are just failing to thrive, and the focus shifts towards more um, comfort, comfort measures and palliative care measures, then uh, the, the palliative care team has been on from the beginning. So even though they're part of our team, they still manage to maintain a very independent framework where you know, they feel comfortable telling us like, look, I don't know, I, I see it this way or I see it that way. So it's really not about making them look more like us or us more like them, it's mm -hmm. about bringing two unique skill sets together to bear on the patient's needs. You know, something that we found through our experience together so far is that for these left ventricular assist device patients, that often we are called to the table to help, for example, with, a, with pain or with another symptom, but because we come with an entire interdisciplinary palliative team and that approach that we're finding that maybe pain is the way that we're getting in the door, with a patient, but we're finding lots of supportive care needs that we can start to address. And having a partnership like this, we're able to go back to the heart failure service and say, you know, here's how we're gonna work on the pain, but let's also think about some coping strategies. Let's think about some spiritual support. That's let's right. think about disposition needs. Let's think about caregiver burden. Um, and from a, from a related but different perspective than your interdisciplinary team might have already. How are you all able to do this with without sort of extending your, your clinical bandwidth too far. Um, that even in systems where there's some good palliative care happening and some good advanced heart failure happening and people want to collaborate, it's hard to be able to do this without being sort of um, overwhelmed by the, the clinical needs and the patient volumes. And I think that moving forward, I think something that we're really interested in looking at more and exploring is, is how can we not just help to provide a good palliative clinical experience for patients and families, but how can we help 
advanced heart failure providers to learn some of those generalist palliative skills so that they'll be able to do exercise some of that themselves.